This is my review on Home Alone. Titled the first one. It was called Home Alone. I understand this has become a beloved Christmas classic. You know? If this is, if makes many people think of Christmas, I lost his words. I know I said I like this one, but I, um, I'm going back to my original opinion I had on it, which says I despise this movie. I think it's stupid. It'll rot your fucking brain. More than Justice League from 2017, well, in every way. So, the plot of the film is, uh, everyone in the family is an absolute prick to Kevin. That's the main protagonist. It's just in the. It's amazing how punchable each family member is. Truly is. And um. Seems escalate when he uh, attacks Buzz because he s says he's going to have to throw up to give it the last piece of Tim. And he starts throwing, and he like says, "Kevin, yeah, I can so up." Uh, Buzz gets attacked by Kevin, and then uh, this uncle uh, gets pizza on him, and. Uh, because Kevin true he didn't he has like the having last pizza but then again he doesn't have anything else to say for some so uh I also he's going home because of what, uh, as far as far we know he hasn't eaten since the movie began. So uh you know it was kinda weird how everyone actually got a slice of pizza except for Kevin. And, um, because he attacked by everyone staring at Kevin, uh, and s uh, Kevin, well, mother's mad at Kevin, it's, and, uh, the uncle calls Kevin a little shit, saying, look what you did, you little shit. Because he got pizza spilled on his lap. And instead of the people looking at the uh, uncle after he was uh, call, after calling Kevin a little shit, wondering why the hell would you call someone that, especially in the house to in the house to a kid who clearly doesn't know better. This is like instead of people looking at the young oldie about this, look, still looking at Kevin for some reason. It's it gives you Silence of the Lamb vibes, the look they they give. Like you feel like they're about to abduct Kevin. And 
do weird things with them. I understand what they want to give the impression that uh, there's some blading cabin and uh, you know. Honestly, I think Kevin needs to, uh... They gotta give him some fucking slack, or at least his own room, because an attic's not a room. It's a fucking attic. Yeah. You know... Why the fuck is his room in an attic? It is not even a nice-looking attic. It's a crappy, disgusting looking attic. My god. You know, I'm starting to see why Kevin's trying to accept an asshole. And because his family's are fucking assholes themselves. So, Kevin might be a psychopath, but there's a reason his family's fucking insane and assholes. And kind of stupid like Kevin. I guess he gets it all from his family that he lives in. Why doesn't Kevin have his own room in the house? At all? He lives in the fucking attic! You know, I mean, I know it was like, uh, I understand what Kevin did was wrong, but, uh, you know, because the most time to go over the room and tell people to while well, telling him how a uh, piece of shit he is, basically, it's because he's the only one who's misbehaving. You know, Mom, Kevin's mom, you know. Maybe you're not that much of a role model yourself because you have your kid live in the attic, sleep and live there. It's like, my God. Will you two leases and put in a second room, a spare room? Or buy a bigger house? Or a condo? Or anything? I mean... He lives... His room's in the attic. Anyway, moving on. So, he, uh... Kevin on himself and everyone... All over the family leaves him behind and didn't realize that the, uh, mistooking another kid for Kevin. So they go to the airport, fly off. Then the mother realized she left her own son behind. Now you realize it, huh? Dumbass. It's all happened because they overslept and has a flight. Original flight time, so they had to make it to their flight. So, uh. How could you not realize that the, the Kevin hasn't said a damn thing? I 
I mean, all the other kids are not exactly quiet. Or polite, like Kevin. So, and neither the parents or the any of the adults, so... How could they not realize they left those, uh, that Kevin wasn't saying anything? And nobody realized till the mother realized it because she had to break the to everybody, blah, 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 I guess, off screen. So... Kevin's also home alone for a few days. Because she's the mother trying ever trying to get back how to get the back this to the sun back get back to the sun, you know, for the holidays and blah blah blah. Yeah, it's one of those shit movies. And um so, a lot of people are feeling bad except for Buzz because he's a bigger asshole than everyone else, I guess. Because he thinks it'll be good for Kevin to be home alone for a few days and get a taste of the real world. <laughs> you get this. While Buzz is saying that, that's when Kevin runs into burglars. That try to break in, and then he, uh, keeps on finding one night, uh, he, he, like, uh, they swat him, and they chase after him, he dishes them, able to bail, ditch them, and, um, they... Well, when I, my Christmas Eve, that's when finally the movie starts getting going as they survive all of these very, very dangerous booby traps that probably could kill them if it happened in real life. Just one of them. Oh, just a bunch of kid-friendly, harmless pranks in a G-rated movie or a PG-rated movie, like, uh, and all these family, family golden age of family fun. Like, see a man's hair get lit on fire. I mean, his head get lit on fire. See a bald guy get lit on fire. And see another guy almost get get get, get see another guy get electrocuted. <laughs> it's hilarious and I'm all sick. <laughs> see them step on nails that Kevin put out. See them a giant tarantula that's Buzz's pet. Crawl on the uh, one of the burglars' face, and possibly may actually bite them, and kill them.
and many more scenes like Kevin play with a BB gun to shoot at the burglars <laughs> like a slingshot. <laughs> Oh, and then <laughs> he hilariously <laughs> throws paint cans at their face that is full of paint and knocks them downstairs one after the other. <laughs> and to believe this, Believe it or not, this kid, this kid off the drum built up. He probably got all the ideas from all this built up drum. He probably uses for fantasizing on his own family one day. Cause he has blueprints in his own room already made. Oh my god! <laughs> John and Crayon. So basically, so basically, he's kind of. It seems like he's like laying off his frustration, and anger that he's been building up on the burglars that don't really deserve, but his film family actually deserves. And it's it's actually kind of sad. You feel bad for watching the burglars get hurt after a while. You know, uh, one of them uh, has a. Uh, bag of flour flown on their head of uh, several freed and one of them uh, has a bunch of gasoline or oil splattered uh, covered in face in but uh after getting hit in the head with it uh, so uh so in is <laughs> It's actually quite amusing you can see how sick it is. <laughs> because <laughs> the burglars have blood on them. One of them has bl- starts bleeding from their face because they step on nails. <laughs> and this family, f- kid friendly film that all many generations let their kid children watch, but won't let them watch a, uh, but won't, don't want them to watch Robocop. So they put this on instead. <laughs> Because this is so much better than a, a, than actual law enforcement being a good cop and kicking ass brutally, that versus a child pulling cruel, dangerous stunts on a bunch of booby traps for a bunch of booby traps to burglars in a children's film. <laughs> That's meant for children, but somehow Robocop is meant for the adults! <laughs> Even though that's actually about a law enforcement uh, officer who almost gets gunned down, but gets saved, turned to Robocop, and becomes a crime fighter, actually, actual superhero badass. But hey, that's that's because of the dog because it's violent, and I argue so is this maybe this more violent. <laughs> the first two Home Alone films, I'd say, uh, more violent than the RoboCop franchise ever got from the original trilogy. <laughs> Just, I gotta say, people everywhere are fucking insane. I don't know how is this, was this like meant for a kids movie? I mean, there's blood in it. And it's like when uh, one of them gets electrocuted, you see their inside skeleton and fl- fl- flicker. Because they all electrocuted, but they're still alive. Somehow. And because Kevin decides to taunt them and says he's going to call the cops, and Kevin leaves out to go outside. And, um, uh, Kevin basically, um, duped himself into going outside. Figure has to catch up with him. And Kevin's, like, lands on his own trap. The one that is outside where a bunch of marbles, like, got, 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 can make you trip. 
Which is ironically the same amount of trap that tripped the uh, burglars earlier. I think that's what happened. Anyway, so they're done like being burglars and want to become serial killers. They went from being burglars or robbers, basically, to robbing people. Houses, they basically went to Santa to want to convert to a child. Oh, joy, isn't it so fun, kids? Yay! We're going to see child probably get murdered in the kid-friendly film. Yay! Everyone, yay! Oh, Clearly, this is so much fun and exciting and light-hearted. Cheerio! Kill away! Kill away! <laughs> uh, and the old man beats uh, the burglars in the, head, in the head with a shovel that looks like Santa Claus. And T's might be Santa Claus, I guess. But it's really just a neighbor next door who renames his son out because he got advice from Kevin after he goes to church. And, uh... This one all around, well, 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 ends well on Christmas Day. The family's reunited. Buzz found out that Kevin trashed his room and, uh, took the spider out of the cage. And he says, and he really, very, very fairly yells at him, saying, Kevin, what did you do to my room? And, uh, kills the moment in a heartbeat. This touching moment that's supposed to end. And now, that, that's why this gets 0 to 10, and that leads into Home Loan 2, Lost in Thing, you know, which I'm going to talk about now. So anyway, it's basically the same premise of Fane's setup, okay? But the difference is, when Kevin is no longer home, the difference, the, the twist is, the family gets late, Kevin comes this time, but he gets on the wrong plane, but he seems to mistake a guy from his, from his father on the, from the back of him. But he's only saw the father from the back. And the father, like, basically loses track of Kevin because he's not paying attention. Because he decides to give Kevin batteries instead of just telling him to pay attention. That's not a priority now that he needs more batteries for his stupid camera. So they got separated the father and, and Kevin and gets separated from the rest of the family he does and goes to, ends up in New York. Instead of Florida with the rest of the family. Hence the title, Home Alone, Lost to New York. And <laughs> so, instead of, so he goes to his hotel. You think that the first thing he would do was try to call his family. But no, Kevin sees how to have fun when he's self-parental uh, vision. <laughs> because that worked so well last time, Kevin! <laughs> hey, speaking of last time, remember the people that tried to kill Kevin? Well, guess what? They're back in this one and on the run. Even though there's war fires of them everywhere, and pl in plain sight, and they're in plain sight on the streets. Nobody seems to wear that they are wanted fugitives, except for a few cops that are in this room that make more more like cameo roles. But he they bail on them very easily by hiding in fish, raw raw fish in a truck. There must be a metaphor of this somewhere. Of this script being absolute fish, or fishy, or smells like fish. Or what am I talking about? So anyway, Kevin gets caught because he stole the credit card from his father and used it for room service and paying a hotel and stuff. You know, he never paid for anything. You know, he knows how to pay and tip people. And gets caught. And Tim Curry decides to report him to the police because he finds out the credit card stolen from the father. His own father. Meanwhile, the thieves are on the run for Kevin and want revenge for some reason, even though he hasn't really done anything yet. They're just trying to 
and they they have no reasons to do this other than for revenge. That's the they're really revenge people now, for the sake of getting revenge from the events of last m film, and then Kevin in an abandoned warehouse decides to do the same thing by coming up with more dangerous traps besides the same traps. Half the same, half original. That's double the danger. Double the death counts casualties if it works. And um... But it involves him also lighting a match and <laughs> lifting up a rope while the burglars are trying to climb, <laughs> to climb, climb down the building. And the match is not just a, the the rope is more of a well, it's, it's kind of a dynamite rope, I think, or is a rope. Anyway, the rope is on fire. And Kevin's enjoying himself like a psycho. <laughs> anyway, things go south for Kevin again. And this Burley that's become his best friend, that feeds birds in a homeless hobo, decides to save Kevin's skin by getting saved by adult once again. And now Kevin's story ends. With being reunited with his family on Christmas Eve. To Christmas Day, only for him to blow it up in his face by finding he never even paid for room service, but spent money on it and owes a lot of fucking money on room service. So therefore.